Hey kids, welcome to Papa's Bible Stories. For each episode, I pick a Bible story to talk to my kids about. I have a beautiful son, Jacob, who is seven, and a beautiful daughter, Leah, who is five. And these stories are for them. But even though these stories are for my kids, Jacob, Leah, and I would love it very much if you decided to join us. What do you say? Let's get started. Okay, but before we get started, maybe some kids out there are wondering why there hasn't been any Papa's Bible stories lately. You know, I was looking at the calendar, and I'm amazed to discover that it has almost been three months since my last episode. So what happened? Well, it's been a combination of things. For quite a while, I've not been feeling well. Plus, the summer has been super busy. Plus, Papa's work has been super busy. And really, I don't know when these kinds of things are going to interfere with future episodes. So, unfortunately, Papa will just have to get you episodes when I can. And if you feel like it, maybe say a prayer for Papa. All right. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Rebecca was feeling uncomfortable. Rebecca was pregnant, very pregnant. And as all parents know, towards the end of a pregnancy, a mother usually gets uh, uncomfortable, to say the least. But this was something else. Rebecca felt like there was a battle raging in her belly. And she said to herself, if all is well, why am I like this? So she brought it to God. And God answered. And not only did he tell her why she felt so uncomfortable, but he also told her something about her children's future. Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. God was telling Rebecca that she was having twins, and that's why Rebecca felt something strange happening in her belly. Two kidzos were fighting in there. And what was God telling her about her children's future? Well, that both of her children would found great nations. The nation from the younger child would be stronger than the older child's nation. And that her youngest child would ultimately be more important than the older. Well, time continued. And the Bible says, When her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, Indeed, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over. So they called his name Esau. The name Esau means hairy or rough. Afterward, his brother came out. And his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. The name Jacob means supplanter. And supplanter means someone who tries to take someone else's place. And Jacob and Esau grew up. But even though these two sons were born at the same time, to the same parents, and in the same home, they could not have been more different. The Bible describes Esau as a man of the field and a skillful hunter. And Jacob was a mild man, and dwelling in tents. Esau was impulsive and rash. Jacob was patient and thoughtful. Esau was violent and rough. Jacob was gentle and peaceful. Esau was hairy. Jacob was smooth-skinned. Esau was a wild man, and Jacob was a mild man. And as far as their parents were concerned, well, Isaac and Rebekah came to be drawn to their children differently. The Bible doesn't say why, but what it does say is that Isaac loved 
Esau, and Rebekah loved Jacob. Now, I'm sure that Isaac and Rebekah loved both their children, but Isaac loved Esau more, and Rebekah loved Jacob more. Now, just so you kids those know, parents should never allow themselves to love one child more than the other like these parents are doing. Parents should never play favorites. Each child deserves to be 100% loved by their parents. And parents must be careful to guard how they feel about their children. Otherwise, there can be a lot of problems in the family, as we are about to find out. Time went on, and as Rebecca and Isaac raised their sons, something started to cause a lot of drama in the family, and that something was the birthright. Now, what is the birthright? Well, in most families at that time, the birthright meant becoming head of the family and getting double the inheritance from your parents. The birthright was usually given to the oldest son, which in this case was Esau, and it was usually given right before the father died. Now, because Abraham's family was very special, the birthright came with extra responsibilities in that family. Remember the promise that God gave to Abraham, that if he was faithful to God, that he would give his descendants all of Canaan? and that through his descendants, all the nations would be blessed? Well, as time went on, there always needed to be someone in Abraham's family who took responsibility for that promise and who would lead the family to see it fulfilled. So whoever got the birthright in Abraham's family wouldn't just get double the inheritance and become head of the family, but he would be the priest of the family he must marry someone from Abraham's family, like Isaac did. He must raise his kids in God's ways, and he had to live by a higher standard and be extra sure to follow God's leading in all areas of his life. So the birthright was a super important responsibility. And who was going to get the birthright? Well, Esau was the oldest son, so Esau was going to get the birthright. And where's the family drama in that? Well, for one thing, Rebecca thought that Jacob should get the birthright. Remember God had told Rebecca that the older would serve the younger? Well, Rebecca figured that meant that God wanted Jacob to get the birthright. But Isaac... Well, he didn't think so. Esau was his favorite, and it didn't matter what God did or didn't say to Rebekah. It didn't matter if Esau's character might not be suited for all those extra responsibilities. Esau was getting the birthright. And Esau? Well, for his part, he didn't even want the birthright. Oh, for sure, he wouldn't turn down getting double the inheritance. I mean, his father was rich, after all. But Esau knew that the birthright came with all those extra responsibilities, and he was not interested in that. All Esau wanted to do was be free. Free to roam the countryside, to go where he wanted, to eat what he wanted, to marry who he wanted, to be free to do whatever he wanted whenever he wanted to. And Jacob? Well, for Jacob, those extra spiritual responsibilities were all that he could think about. Oh, to be the priest of the family, to marry someone that God had picked for him, to go where God wanted him to go, and to lead in the fulfillment of God's promises. What could be better than that? So, we have a father who's going to give the birthright to his oldest son no matter what, an oldest son who doesn't want the birthright, a mother who wants to give the birthright to her favorite son, and a younger son who is practically obsessed with the birthright. Now that's what we call family drama. 
And this drama went on for many years. And Isaac got older and older until he was about 130 years old and he became blind. And I guess when Isaac became blind, well, he stopped feeling healthy and he felt like he was going to die soon. And if he was going to die soon, well, that meant it was time to give Esau the birthright. The Bible says that Isaac called Esau to him and said, Behold now, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and make me savory food such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. Now, because of all this family drama around the birthright, and since Isaac knew that Rebecca and Jacob wanted Jacob to get the birthright, Isaac had said this to Esau in secret. But the Bible says that Rebecca was listening when Isaac spoke to Esau. So, after Esau left to go hunting, Rebecca went right to Jacob, and she told Jacob that today was the day, and that when Esau got back from hunting, that his father was going to give Esau the all-important birthright. And then Rebekah said to Jacob, Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to what I command you. Go now to the flock and bring for me from there two choice kids of the goats, and I will make savory food from them for your father, such as he loves. Then you shall take it to your father, that he may eat it, and that he may bless you before his death. Jacob was probably shocked. His mother wanted him to do what? To pretend that he was his brother Esau and trick his father into giving him the birthright? That was crazy. First of all, Jacob was a kind and conscientious person and had probably never lied to his father in his life. Never mind for something so important. And besides, how was it even possible to pretend to be Esau? Yes, his father was blind, but Esau and Jacob were so different. Their clothes were different, they smelled differently, their voices were different. And Esau was super hairy. And if his father discovered what he was trying to do, it would have been a disaster. So, Jacob said to his mother, Look, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth-skinned man. Perhaps my father will feel me, and I shall seem to be a deceiver to him, and I shall bring a curse on myself, and not a blessing. But his mother said to him, Let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go get them for me. Jacob probably didn't know what to do. He loved his mother. They were very close. And he was used to trusting her. But she wanted him to do something that he knew to be wrong. To lie to his own father. He couldn't even imagine doing something like that. But at the same time, he really wanted the birthright. And I mean, really wanted it. So, what was Jacob going to do? Well, with a terrible feeling in his stomach and swallowing hard, he made his decision. He was going to get that birthright. The Bible says that Jacob went and got them, that is, the goats, and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory food such as his father loved. Then Rebekah took the choice clothes of her elder son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. Then she gave the savory food and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. 
And with the food in his hands, and probably feeling really uncomfortable with all that goat hair on his hands and neck, and wearing his brother's clothes, he walked into Isaac's tent and said, My father. And so the charade began. Now, as far as we can tell in the Bible, it seems that Isaac was not only blind, but maybe also a little bit hard of hearing. Because Isaac replies, Here I am. Who are you, my son? And then Jacob said, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done just as you told me. Please arise, sit and eat of my game, that your soul may bless me. Now Isaac, well, he was more than just a little suspicious. Hardly any time had gone by since Esau had left, and he was back already. So Isaac replied, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And Jacob quickly made up a reason. Because Lord your God brought it to me. Isaac still wasn't convinced he was talking to Esau. Something was wrong. Maybe it was something in the voice. Maybe it was something about what he said or how he said it. But Isaac decided he needed more proof. So he said, Please come near that I may feel you, my son, whether you really are my son Esau or not. So Jacob got close to his father, and his father reached out to feel his son's hands, and, whoa, those are some hairy hands. Well, those hands definitely felt like Esau's. Well, maybe it was Esau. And Isaac asked one more time, Are you really my son Esau? And Jacob said, I am. Isaac still felt like something was wrong, but he went ahead and ate the food. And for its part, the food tasted just like he liked it and just like he was used to. And after he was done eating, he said to Jacob, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And when Jacob leaned in to kiss his father, Isaac smelled his clothing, which smelled like the field. And with all things considered, the smell of his clothing, the hairy hands, the food, Isaac decided this must be Esau. And he bowed his head, spoke the words of blessing, and gave Jacob the birthright. Not too long after Jacob left his father's tent, well, Esau came back from his hunt. For his part, Esau had mixed emotions. He was probably happy about the double inheritance, but all those extra responsibilities, he wasn't sure about that. And Esau went into his father's tent and said, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that your soul may bless me. And Isaac, hearing someone talking to him, said, Who are you? And Esau responded, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. What? Esau again? And the Bible says that Isaac trembled exceedingly. He was upset. And Isaac said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate of it before you came, and I have blessed him. And then Isaac realized what had happened. He'd been tricked. No wonder the voice had sounded like someone else. It had been someone else. It had been Jacob. Isaac must have started to feel angry. I mean, what son would go to such lengths to lie to his own father? Hadn't he taught Jacob better than that? But before he got too angry, something made Isaac pause. When Isaac had blessed Jacob, it had felt right. He'd felt the spirit in the blessing. God had been in it. And that meant that God had wanted Jacob to get the birthright all this time. And Isaac looked at Esau and said, And indeed, Jacob shall be blessed. 
And the Bible says that when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry. And he said to his father, Bless me, me also, O my father. Esau was really upset. Strangely so. I mean, he hadn't necessarily even wanted the birthright five minutes ago. But now that it was gone, now that someone had taken it from him, well, it was all he could think about. But there was nothing to be done. The blessing had been given. The spirit had confirmed it. And Esau went from being upset to being angry. And the Bible says that Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. Jeesh! Esau was so angry with Jacob that he wanted to kill him, to kill his own brother. Well, it didn't take long for Rebecca to find out about how angry Esau was and about what he was going to do to Jacob. And I'm sure she was upset. I mean, it looked like it was going to be a Cain and Abel all over again. What was to be done? And then the thought occurred to her. You know, Esau could get mad easily, but if he was distracted, he could cool down easily too. So all she needed to do was find a way to get Jacob out of town for a while. Now, what would be a good reason for Jacob to leave town for a while? What would be a good reason for... Aha! She had it. Maybe it was an opportune time for Jacob to go find a wife. Remember that Abraham's family could not marry with the people that they lived around, the Canaanites, because they didn't follow God's ways? So at some point in the future, Jacob was going to have to travel to find a wife. And well, now seemed like a good time. So, Rebekah went to her husband, Isaac, and said, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. Which, by the way, Heth was the father of the Hittite people, and the Hittites were one of the peoples that lived in Canaan. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of Heth, like those who are the daughters of the land, what good will my life be to me? And Isaac thought about it, then called a most likely scared Jacob and said to him, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. Arise and go to Padan Aram, which is most likely the area around where Rebekah's family lived, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take yourself a wife from there of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. So Isaac sent Jacob away. And I'm guessing that Jacob didn't need too much encouragement to get going as soon as possible. I mean, his brother was talking about killing him after all. And besides, he wasn't going to be gone more than a few months anyways, right? So, probably the very next morning, he packed up a few things, said some quick but emotional goodbyes, and rushed out the door. All day he traveled. And the Bible says that Jacob came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. And he lay down in that place to sleep. And as Jacob laid there about to fall asleep, I'd imagine that he felt pretty alone and ashamed. I mean, he hadn't necessarily meant to do something so bad, but he'd done something pretty terrible. He'd lied to his father. He'd stolen the birthright. What did his family think about him? What did God think about him? And how could Jacob ever lead his family to follow God after doing such a terrible thing? These were probably Jacob's thoughts as he drifted off to sleep. But then, just then, 
when Jacob was feeling all alone and ashamed, God did something amazing. God came to Jacob in a dream. And in his dream, he was in the same place that he had just fallen asleep. He looked up and saw a huge ladder. The ladder rested on the ground, but the top of the ladder went all the way up to heaven. Angels were going up the ladder to heaven and down the ladder to earth. And God was standing at the top of the ladder in heaven. And then God spoke to Jacob and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Now, kidzos, I don't want you to miss this. When Jacob was feeling alone, when he was feeling at his worst, just after he had made the biggest mistake of his life, that's when God came and gave him the promise. God could have chosen any moment to give him Abraham's promise of land and descendants, but he chose that moment because God wanted Jacob to know that he wasn't alone, that God hadn't abandoned him and that God would always be with him. Because that's what God is like. Now, don't get me wrong. Jacob still had to face the consequences of what he'd done. He was still going to have to leave his family, and he couldn't turn around and go home. But even when we are feeling those consequences, when we are feeling guilty and ashamed of what we've done, God is still with us. And he always will be. All right, kidzos, that's it for this episode. So what'd you guys think about the story? That was quite the crazy family drama, wasn't it? Well, in the next episode, we're going to continue Jacob's story. Because lots of other stuff is going to happen to him. But until then, to all the kids tuning in, I hope you have an awesome day. God be with you, and I hope we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.